reality. Let's touch upon an old passion of mine, reading abysmal crappy pastas. This one will be about some of Nintendo's greatest known characters, as they explode in hyper-realistic blood and eat the souls of unfortunate game owners. So let's check out the 10 worst Nintendo creepy pastas. And of course, if we're talking creepy pastas, we should have the old creepy pasta expert, my good friend Hoodoo Hoodlum's Revenge. You ready, Dennis? I sure am, Josh. It's great to be back in the saddle. What's on our Creepy pasta list today. Oh, I found some stinkers this time. I've discovered that Google Translate needs an option for broken crappy pasta language. Let's see some of those crappy pastas, eh? But first, let's start with a quick bonus entry. The Wario Head Apparition vs Sonic EXE. Oh no, not Sonic.exe again. Uh, we'll never escape him, Dennis. This one seems to be some sort of script for a death battle, kind of like the channel Screw Attack makes. So it might sound a bit different to usual, as I'll read it in its script form. Description. It's a clash of creepypastas, as two of gaming's most notorious gaming creepypastas go head to head in a battle to the bitter end. The question is, who will win? Will the apparition show Sonic EXE fun? Or will the demonic hedgehog prove to Wario why he is God? Intro. No rules, only bloodshed. DBX. Fight. Green Hill Zone. Fear. Fear was the only thing that could describe the emotions that Tails was feeling right now, as he sprinted down the blood-soaked lands of Green Hill Zone, with largest walls of flames and the carcasses of dead critters surrounding him. Tears filled his very eyes as a demented voice called out to him from behind. You can never outrun me, Tails. However, the two-tailed fox was unfortunate enough to trip as whatever was pursuing him was getting closer and closer, as a gloved hand snatched him by the neck. The fox felt his body lift right off the ground as he was met eye to eye with his supposed friend, Sonic the Hedgehog. The only difference was that his body was coated with blood. His eyes were pitch black, and his pupils were a dark crimson red. Sonic EXE was his name, and terror was his game. Okay, I'm sorry, but that really takes me out of the moment when you shoehorn in silly rhymes like that. How does Tails sound? P please don't, Tails begged. But unfortunately, Tails' pleas for help were ignored. Really, I thought X would listen and he'd just drop Tails. He's just a nice guy like that. Hate to break it to you, pal, but mercy isn't really on my to-do list. What a stupid ass line. Who says that? Now then, time to die. However, before the demon could kill his prey... Boring. The music stops. A loud baritone Italian voice came booming through the land as Sonic.exe immediately dropped tails and began to jerk his head both ways, trying to find the source of this disembodied voice. What the... Who said that? Up here, dingus. Floating above him was a giant disembodied head of a man with a fat chin, a pink noise, with a curly black mustache. This was the notorious monster who had haunted many personalized copies of Super Mario 64. The Wario Head Apparition. Wario. <laughs> what the hell? Sonic EXE said while Tails saw this as a golden opportunity to escape as he immediately sped off down the trail. The hell do you want, fatty? <laughs> Sonic EXE calling someone fatty. In response, the Wario Head Apparition cackled a little before clearing his throat, if he had one at least. <clears throat> well, if you must know, I'm deciding to invade other games because why not? Besides, this world is terrible and needs a few changes, including me booting the jerk who thought all this edgy stuff was necessary. Oh, you're thinking of taking my world? Well, too bad, freak. In this realm, I am God. <coughs> <laughs> That's a good one. And I'm the president of Ecuador. This obviously pissed off the demon. Not only was this floating head invading his realm, but he also had the nerve to make fun of him. I mean it, freak. I'm God here, and I won't stand around taking crap from a floating head. Wait, 
You really think you're a god? You gotta be cuckoo crazy. You want god? Wario show you god. <laughs> oh, and that's it. Well, I guess the verdict is for us to decide. Well, my verdict is the same as most of the commenters on this story. Wario showed Sonic EXE what fun is. Yeah, I would have enjoyed a bit of the battle and seeing Wario kick X's butt, but it was still a very lively story. To be honest, that was not bad at all. That was really entertaining. You can tell that the author had a lot of fun while writing this and knew a lot about these uh, supposed urban legends or, you know, creepypastas from back in the day. The suggested music to accompany and it really set the scene well too. Let's hope the next story is as cool as this one was. And now onto the 10 main Nintendo crappypastas. Number 10. Legend of Zelda Twilight Death. Does anyone remember the Wii version of The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess? I remember it fondly, as it was my first ever Zelda game. Oh yeah, I do. I played it back in the day. The motion controls were great and made the story more immersive. In any case, I have a story that I think everyone here will enjoy. What a refreshingly cheery opening. Let's hear their tale. It was a bright sunny day when I searched Evil Bay for used Wii games. When I found a copy of Twilight Princess that was being sold for free. I bought it and a creepy old man's face came out of my computer screen and said, Thank you for your purchase. Now die. I thought it was weird, but I assumed it was just a glitch with my computer. In any case, the disc immediately came to my door, and I was excited to play it. When I turned on the cartridge and put the Wii in the disc tray, the game started. That, that doesn't make any sense. Is it a cartridge or is it a disc? The title screen was missing Elden Bridge, and Link was there on a Pona, but with hyper-realistic blood eyes. I was very spooked, but remembered I was in a creepy pasta, so I assumed it was just a glitch and kept playing. How meta of them. After I selected a new file, Link came onto the screen and he had hyperrealistic blood eye. And he kept stabbing Ilya and Colin until they were dead from dying today. I screamed hyperrealistically as I was scared I would die. Then Link said, you're next. If you read this story, Link will come to you and hyperrealistically kill you until you're dead today. Not tomorrow, today. That was so scary. I don't know what I'm gonna do with myself. I don't know if I can sleep tonight, man. Ooh. Number 9. Mario Tennis 64 Pasta it was night time. I was bored and decided to play old games for the Nintendo 64. One of them was Mario Tennis. The Mario Tennis intro was just going well until the scene with Wario and Luigi. Well, I mean, it's, a, it's an intro. It's not going to be doing well or badly. After Luigi mocked Waluigi, they began to approach each other angrily. And after that, Luigi swung his racket at Waluigi's face, causing Waluigi to bleed and his eyeballs fell out. After that, Mario told Luigi to stop it, and Wario went in front of Mario and started throwing some insults at him like if it was his fault. I love that they just skipped over Waluigi's death right there, like what happened? I skipped the intro, but not even the title screen was good. It was pitch black and a flashlight pointed to Yoshi and Birdo's dead bodies. I was scared and skipped the title screen as fast as I could. The menu screen was even worse. Toad had empty eye sockets and a bleeding mouth. The cheerful music that played in the title screen began to slow down, and then it stopped. After that I heard some static noises. I had to work up the courage to get through without any fear. I bravely chose a doubles match, two game and one set match. The character select screen was pretty much worse than the intro. Pretty much. The characters had bleeding parts, missing eyes, except Paratrooper and Boo. Looks like you're in the clear, buddy. Wow. I choose Paratrooper and Baby Mario. Well, I'd rather Boo be left out of this anyway. And I choose the CPUs to be in the Super Bloody Bros. The match started and the crowd started chanting DEATH until the match was over. I got two games and the Bloody Bros got one. After I did a game set, the screen froze for four seconds. I was so scared. <laughs> I was so scared. And the screen started blinking red and yellow. After that, a Super Mario 64-ish Bowser started to approach the screen and said, Why have you done this to us? I replied, I haven't done anything, Bowser. I'm serious. I just wanted to play my favorite game. If you still think I did something, I'm very sorry. How can I turn this game back to normal? Please? He heard me somehow and said, Here is what you should do. 
before he was going to tell me what I should do. The screen froze again for four seconds. This time, there was no blinking colors or anything. Instead, Paratrooper appeared and said, Help me. I started to hear some Japanese-like <laughs> screaming. I began to shed some tears and said, I never wanted this to happen to me. Then the song How Could This Happen To Me starts playing. I went to bed, slept, and somehow had a nightmare. I woke up at a stormy night and saw some shadows of Bowser and Yoshi. I slowly went outside of my bedroom and I heard something that sounded like Bowser's voice. Get out now! Followed by Yoshi's voice. We are waiting for you! That was my Yoshi impression, everyone. Hope you liked it. I ran to my sister's bedroom and jumped out of her window. Well, that was sudden. Outside was spiraling red in the sky, and also all the buildings and houses were set on fire. And I heard some screams. When I went in the backyard, the characters from Mario Tennis were there. Why? They were holding double-edged swords and had bleeding eyes. <laughs> they slowly approached me, and Mario said, We just lost our hopes on you. Followed by Bowser saying, You're in hell. And Daisy said, You're a disgrace to be one of our fans. I woke up and scared enough to realize that was a dream. It was 7.30 a.m. and I checked Mario Tennis 64 again and it was all normal. I guess something possessed the Chark Rage before I began to play it. The end. Or is it? Well, yeah, it clearly says the end there. Oh, well then, on to the next story. And next, we have The Evil Legend of Zelda. Well, it's not the most original title I've heard. Maybe the story will be more original? So I'm a big Zelda fan, and I have lots of nostalgia with it. So I decided to search for a copy on eBay. When I searched Legend of Zelda NES, I only found one game. It was a grey cartridge, and had a paper label. In ketchup, or blood. The label said, Zelda won, so I bought it. The price was $6.66. I thought that was a little odd, how it was so cheap and all. When the mailman came to my house the next week, and he gave me the game, I eagerly ran back inside to play the game. I also expected the mailman to leave, but he didn't. He just stood there watching me. I just ignored it and plugged the game in. But when it started up, it was all glitchy. So is the mailman still out there to this day? That's a very dedicated mailman. So I got out my Nintendo NES and started the game. The game acted normally until I got to the first dungeon boss. When I beat it, the room was covered in ketchup. When I went to the room where the Triforce usually is, instead it was the dragon's heart. Then when I went to collect it, Link started eating it. There was one thing I had to say after that. Hey, it's just a glitch. It happens all the time. So I reset the console only to find that when I hit it, the screen had changed. It was an 8-bit cutscene of me committing suicide. <laughs> I figured this had to be a crude joke from the developers of the game. But I was terrified and as a result, got out an axe and chopped my game and console to bits. But the game was fine. Then I opened the game only to find a blue and white ball being shot out of it. What? What, like a Hadouken? I ran out my door to get out of this hell, only to find it was locked. Then I heard some demonic laughter. I turn around to see what it was. It was the mailman. High face started deforming. It was distorting until he turned into the devil. He then said, fight me, faker. So I ran up and ripped his teeth out and stabbed him with them. Then he said, you've killed me. You've killed me. And being the Zelda fan I am, I knew what to say. Good. Good. <laughs> Oh, that's a fantastic Zelda CDI reference. I love it. I then decided that I hated video games, and I try never played them again. And that's how I became the President of the United States. I try to tell my wife Michelle about it, but she didn't believe me. Sad face. But every night when I'm lying in bed, I feel a male man -y presence. But when I look around, nothing is there. I'm Barack Obama, and I approve this message. Huh, I didn't know Mr. Obama wrote crappy pastas. I know he does documentaries. I mean, I knew his music taste was impeccable, but I never knew he was also a big Zelda fan. Number seven. 
A scary Pokemon creepypasta. I loved Pokemon as a kid. It was my favorite game ever. I don't have any of my old games because my mom sold them at a flea market. That night I cried because my Pokemons were all gone. 20 years later, here I am on eBay trying to get Pokemon Yellow. The guy who owned it used the name Clichéd Old Guy and had the price set to one cent. The item description read, I got this game from a flea market where the guy running it said it was free. So I'm gonna make it one cent just because he said it was haunted. I was like, no way is it haunted, and I bought it. It came to me in two days, and as soon as I got it, I started it up. It played fine until I got to Lavender Town. You see, when I was a kid, I heard the Lavender Town theme, and I almost wet my pants. The music still creeped me out and it got weird as soon as the music slowed down and the screen had a tint of blood red. After 10 minutes passed, I was in the bathroom for those 10 minutes, the music slowed even more and the screen looked bl blood red and almost hyperrealistically blood red. I was like, dear god, this is getting scary. Then a hyperrealistic picture of Marowak with hyperrealistic eye sockets filled with hyperrealistic blood hyperrealistically appeared. I was hyperrealistically scarred, as that wasn't a kid's game. Then there was hyperrealistic audio of a hyperrealistic woman saying, You made my son an orphan. You made me dead. Now you shall die. With that, I just ran out of the house and just kept running a good 10 miles away from my house till I heard a boom. Oh, it's quite the marathon runner. So I ran back to my house to find it in hyperrealistic ruins. And my Game Boy was utterly destroyed as it had hyperrealistic exploded. After that, I found some clean clothes, $120,000, and my car keys, as well as some food and just left. Not a day goes by where I remember that day. So you don't remember that day? And that's the end. What was with the $120,000 he found? That's a very odd thing to find lying about. Maybe Marowak left him the money to say sorry for blowing up his house. Well, that was nice of her. Number six, Blood64. Oh, come on, we haven't even got past the title yet. I am Jack, a 16-year-old kid living in the country. Hi, Jack. Recently, I learned that Nintendo was making a new console, so naturally I wanted to buy it, being a Nintendo kid. It was codenamed Blue64. Huh, didn't they already make a 64-bit console? I let that thought slip from my mind. A contest happened, saying that a lucky raffle winner would get a package including two games and a zap gun, like the SNES. I entered it and hey, what do you know? I won the raffle, so I set it up. The first game I put in was Super Mario 64, the second edition. It started up like the original Mario 64, until I entered the save selection menu. There was a save file already, even though it was fresh out of the package. It was called Smoke, as a new feature was apparently naming save files. So I booted it up, and it showed a crying Princess Peach, while Princess Daisy was holding a gun to her hood. The cutscene dragged on for five minutes, until suddenly Mario showed up. He shouted, you're gonna pay for this. Then he pulled a rifle out of a gun holster clearly made for a pistol. I could control Mario now, but all I could do was move the crosshairs to aim at an impatient Princess Daisy. I pressed the A button, and Daisy started bleeding hyper-realistically. She charged towards the screen, and the screen flashed to black. Hey, this is awesome. This is like those old Newgrounds animations where Mario was all edgy with a gun and stuff. Reminds me a lot of my childhood. After maybe 10 minutes, the screen turned to white and I was controlling Luigi. He was in a pure white room and all that was in there was a bag of droogs, a drain and a shower head attached to the ceiling. Suddenly, the room started to fill with a hyper-realistic liquid that turned out to be acid. Hey, that's a plot twist. I thought it was gonna be... You know what? Luigi screamed and dissolved hyper-realistically, his eyes bulging out hyper-realistically. But then I heard a drip noise in my house and saw a liquid drip onto my counter, melting it. I quickly ran out of the house. My house sank into the ground and Princess Daisy jumped out the chimney. The chickens, cows, and pigs were all murdered in increasingly brutal ways. Mario's corpse was being dragged along the ground by Daisy. I turned on the television screen, which was showing the Blue 64 startup screen, except the logo was different. It was bloodstained and said Blood 64. Ugh. 
You're doing this on purpose, aren't you, Strider? Why, Dennis, what on the bloody bloodlands of blood are you bloody talking about? After this moment, I felt what could only be described as dying slowly and painfully inside, realizing the hours I wasted with this wretched game. I turned on the TV, and it showed a happy Mario. He opened his mouth and blood poured out non-stop. Skeletons rose out of the TV as well as Mario. The skeletons popped out of holes in the wall and I died. Okay. Number 5. Kirby's Nightmare Land. Well, how thoughtful. The author has given us a picture of Kirby's Nightmare Land. That really helps set the scene of the spooky Kirby world. If Kirby could ever possibly be spooky. Well, you see some of the bosses he goes up against. I changed my mind. Author's note. Hey guys, just so you know, this is my own creepypasta. You won't find this on any other website. Oh, important information right there. You might not know this, but I like Kirby a lot and still do to this very day. You're right, I don't know that. I, who are you? I've always appreciated his cute look and fun games. But there was a day that everything changed. I was sitting in my room watching Kirby right back at you. In case you don't know, Kirby Right Back At You was an anime about Kirby based off the games. I was on the 76th episode until there was a knocking on my door. Something arrived on my front door. I paused my episode to see what it was. A game chart ridge arrived. It had no front cover, just a small paper attached to it with pen writing saying, Kirby's Nightmare Land. I was confused and curious at the same time. I wondered, what kind of a name is Kirby's Nightmare Land? But I decided to play it. I thought, what could possibly go wrong? This couldn't be that bad, because as I said earlier, Kirby is cute, so how could he be living in a so-called nightmare land? I found that answer when I played through the whole game. So I injected the cartridge into my Super Game Boy. The first thing I saw was the Kirby's Dreamland title screen, and I was like, awesome, because remember, I like Kirby. When I pressed the Spark button, it showed the typical stage beginning animation. I had Kirby go through the stage. No enemies were seen, except a little waddle -dee in the middle of the stage, as I had Kirby inhale the enemy. The music got slower and slower till it eventually stopped. Then the waddle -dee got inhaled, and a cutscene played. It showed the waddle -dee falling into Kirby's stomach. Oh my god, is this turning into like the movie Nope? I could see how desperate Waddle Dee was, and then another thing happened after that cutscene. The sky turned black. The grass and leaves turned orange. There was blood coated on the hill, but Kirby looked perfectly normal. I had Kirby continue until Kirby closed his eyes. It wasn't till I saw good old King Deity. He looked suspicious and walked up to Kirby. Kirby then opened his eyes and showed something horrifying. His eyes were black with two glowing red dots staring at King DDD and very sharp fangs. Then he inhaled King DDD. The same cutscene played, but with King DDD falling into Kirby's stomach and then Kirby went to another level. How many times are you gonna write King DDD? I don't mind by the way, it's a very fun name to pronounce. King DDD, King DDD, King DDD. It was King Deide's castle, but it was dark and the walls had blood stains. Then he inhaled every citizen of Dreamland. No one could escape Kirby's tornado that leads to his mouth. Not even Wispy Woods, not even Dino Blade. And then once everyone was swallowed, Kirby stopped and stretched out his smile. And then another cutscene played. It showed everyone in Kirby's stomach. They go so crazy that they were eventually went into suicide. King DDD swung his hammer at his face. Meta Knight stabbed himself to death and so on. And then I realized this Kirby was not the cute and cheery pink puffball like I knew him to be. This Kirby was a monster, a pure evil, sadistic, all-powerful, dangerous monster. He smiles at all the pain he gives to his victims. He swallows and tortures his prey. This Kirby is the very embodiment of evil. I ejected the charge rage from my Super Game Boy, lit up the fire pit, and tossed the charge rage into the fire pit. The demon inside the cartridge was finally destroyed. Now I can go back to watching Kirby right back at ya. You gotta say, really like the description of the demonic Kirby there at the end. That was like pretty good writing actually. Like the story in itself, like very funny, obviously poking fun at a lot of cliches and stuff, but I uh, gotta say like, I did enjoy that. I mean, I'm enjoying all of these stories. Yeah, you can tell that the authors had fun. Number four, Legend of Zelda 64. 
Let me start at the beginning. It was a stormy night and I was with my friend. So we decided to get my N64 console and he will get some gums from around town. I respond aid that as long as it's a legal copy, oh it will do. I decided to chuck one of the games in the system and grabbed a controller. It is title was Legend of Zelda 64. I waited till my friend was ready and I turned it on. I heard nothing but static and saw some hard to make out pictures of what appeared to be Link. The game opened in some kind of forest with bridges connecting the trees. I realized this was probably Kokiri Forest, but it looked so different. Link was sleeping in his bed when he awoke with a startle. You could hear screams outside now. We went outside his house and the screen went blurry. Then Saria was impaled by a sword. We made Link go over to her. Guess what he did? He pulled the sword out like nothing happened. Blood squirted everywhere. I realized this wasn't the regular Link, for he didn't care about Saria. Nah, you think? And when he went onto the items menu, the description of the sword said, The blood on it tastes fresh and delicious. Me and my friend and I were startled at that. I lured myself to press A, and he bent down and you heard a gnawing noise <laughs> along with blood splattering. Link came back up with his face covered in blood. My friend ran to puke in the sink. I foolishly kept going. I saw Mido holding the shield, and I grabbed it off of him. I also noticed another option for him. It was decapitate. So I did it, and Link bent down and cut off Mido's head. Not only this, but when you did it, you heard evil laughs from Link. Left the forest and noticed next area had a bunch of people with black bloodstained robes on. I selected Mido's head, and when I did, they bowed to me like I was their god. One of them spoke introducing themselves as the Deathbringers. As they did this, my screen looked as though it was melting. Then it came up with a hit list, a list of Zelda characters to kill. And it started playing a tune backwards while the screen went all negative colors till I couldn't stand it anymore. I ripped out the game chart rage and ran into the kitchen to get my friend who was still vomiting. Oh my god, they're not feeling well. It was only then I noticed a note on one of the boxes reading, Thank you for getting rid of these games. Play them at your own risk. They are cursed. Never buy an unofficial game. Ah, uh, that's why you gotta read the fine print. The end. Well, this story just goes to show, only ever buy official Nintendo games. Otherwise, Link may turn into a mass murdering maniac. Next up, we have Pokemon Orange. I'm a big collector of Pokemon, so one day I went onto my bike to find some kind of rare bootleg version or a weird glitch version. So far, I wasn't having any luck until I came across this one house that looked like there was barely anything there. Plus, there was a creepy man behind the table. I asked him if there was any Pokemon games, and he said yes. Then he got a Game Boy chart rage out, and I asked him how much it was, and he said it was free. Oh, I've never heard that before. When I took home my new game and popped it into my Game Boy, what I saw I'll never forget. First off, instead of the normal Game Freak logo, it showed a weird picture of Bulb. Bulbasaur. And I thought this was really weird, but I just figured it was some sort of special game, so I carried on. Everything was normal until I got to Lavender Town, when suddenly a message box appeared at the bottom of the screen. It said, Hello, Warren. I thought this was really weird too, but then I heard a screeching noise that was horribly agonizing. And then I heard an evil laugh that's even more painful. At first, I thought it was just a glitch. But then another message box appeared and it said, give the cartridge back. So I did, and to this day, I'll never forget Pokemon Orange. Well, that was short and relatively painless. But as William Shakespeare once said, brevity is the soul of wit. Number two. Donkey Kong, the forgotten character. One day in January, I was scrolling through Amazon looking for a game to go on my Switch. I found a limited edition Donkey Kong 64 on the Switch game. I decided to order it and I saw a character called Lanky Kong. I didn't know who this character was, as I've only played Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. And when I decided to pick him, that's when things started to get weird. I liked his ability. His rocket boots are super cool, I thought to myself. As I played the level, his eyes were missing. Then, his clothes turned recolored. Then, his eyes reappeared, but they were drooping blood. I started to get creeped out, so I tried picking the other characters. Then, on the character pick screen, they were all dead. I turned two TV off and started crying. Then, the TV turned back on it had letters in red that said, Did you forget about me? Everybody forgets about me. 
Then a cheap screamer happens with the Jeff the Killer face. How unoriginal, I thought. Well, it's Prob a Troller. Then I looked on my fridge. That had a picture of Lanky Kong. The end. Why was Jeff the Killer in there? That, that made no sense. And lucky last, we have Pokemon Dot. Hey, haven't I read this one before? It was about six years ago. Yeah, but I just consider this creepypasta this fascinating anomaly of the universe. So I was hoping to give it a read here. Well, okay. If you're sure, prepare for the death of the English language. It's a normal day. I'm only on house. I am get a letter. But this letter was sent by Anonymous. In this letter was inserted a CD. I'm run to computer. A CD gets a Pokemon game. Extension is dot die. But it is ignored. That's my big wrong. I'm open this file. All is normal. I'm go to Brock. But music is not normal. This lookalike music from horror game. And this Pokemon's is horror game. Brock is scary. His face is look a dead. I must start a battle and ignoring it's full stop. First Brock Pokemon is Ghost Geodude. Next Pokemon is look a new. His all a takes is saying die, run, or you fool. I'm win this game. Now I'm start battle with Pikachu. His death eated me. A game over screen is a bloody screen remake of Pokemon Leaf Green start screen. I want end the game, but menu gets one options. Die. Die. But this not effect. At last, I'm off computer from energy. Computer is off. I'm run to bathroom. I'm exit from bathroom. But my house is in blood. I'm run to main room. In this room, I'm looking a nightmare. A bloody dead Bulbasaur devover eats my family. I'm run, but too late. Bulbasaur eats me. I'm exit from normal sleep. I'm go to computer, but computer don't get a CD with Pokemon. That that's tomorrow, I'm back from school. I thought, that's normal day. But no, A, this nightmare is happening in real. But I'm now run from Bulbasaur teeth. I'm returning to house at next day. My family is lived. I'm go to my room, but I'm looked a Bulbasaur devourer image in my computer wallpaper. I'm saying this to my family, but my family looked a my normal wallpaper. Only me can looked a this scary wallpaper. I'm restart computer, but that's no effect. I'm try edit a wallpaper, but options is blocked. I'm looked the wallpaper on all computer. Next day, a wallpaper is now invading my TV. In this day, dead my sister. Next day, dead my dad. Next day, my mum. And last day, puppy. All people who seeing me, dead in next day. I'm delete a CD with Pokemon dot die. And all peoples, animals, on more lived, a curse is dead. All bad power is defeated. Or no. That story, it's like someone got sick and vomited up the English language. It somehow reads even worse than the first time. But it is very entertaining and very charming. So thank you to the author for making it. The entertainment value, top notch. Well, that's one thing off my bucket list. And thank you as well to the other authors for giving us some fun stories to laugh over. And if you would like to see Dennis and I do another crappy past the list in the future, let me know in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching and hopefully I might see you next time. Today's member question is from Xenon Hatcher. Generally, it's their fine captions you'll see on these videos. They ask, what is the weirdest experience you've had on a trip abroad? Well, for funsies, why don't I give you my weirdest experience in the air abroad? I once did a 22 hour trip to Canada standing by the toilets. I generally did this on long flights because I can't stand sitting down and I get antsy. Luckily the flight attendants were very understanding and didn't bother me. So yeah, I'm that weirdo on your flight standing by the toilets trying to look inconspicuous and probably doing a bad job of it. Next time I'll come up with a weird experience on the ground. Thanks for the question.